course, the Chinese cockapickers didn't really understand that much. So there, there is a, an epigraph from The Guardian, which I won't bother to, I think I've just sort of paraphrased that for you, so I won't read that. Uh, this is the, the backbone of the book. This is a 12-poem sequence, uh, which um, operates within a larger silence and starts again, starts again and again and again. In fact, it starts 12 times and steals Mozart's patterns of repetition in order to do that. Um, Prisgear, you need to know, is the last outcrop of rock that disappears beneath the water when the tides come in. So it's the last <coughs> bit of dry land, two miles out, and so is therefore sort of rich in symbolic potential. So what I'm going to read is some extracts from this long sequence. And as I move from section to section, I will actually number them out loud so you know that we're progressing. <coughs> One. <laughs> they go down again, imagine them, spun in a roaring vortex of gravel, spun and somersaulted by the force of water, burning water, hard in the throat and the mouth as stones that hurt. The throat, at such a distance from each snarling man, gulps water and draws it in again. They are bound to each other, all twenty-three, by whatever part of the human body touches at any given second, like a system of branches struggling in and out of, trying to climb what might be thought of as a trunk of life. And they are bucked and thrown about, gulping until their cheeks are buckled tin. They shed coins, a Wellington boot, their eyes shrink back into their heads as if their lips are magnified, until they are overtaken, overtaken, and the last litter cell phone spins to the bottom, spelling out no network covering. 